Hello and welcome back. In chapter 7 of The Wealth of Nations, Smith introduces us to one of the most important concepts in economics, supply and demand. He does this by talking about what he calls the natural price and the market price of a commodity. This builds on the idea of prices he introduced in chapter 5. An item's natural price is when the price is neither more nor less than is sufficient to pay the rent of the land, the wages of the labour and the profits of the stock employed in raising, preparing and bringing it to market. When a commodity is sold at its natural price, it includes enough profit for the seller not to lose on the trade the revenue they could have made with a different use of the stock, and enough profit to give them revenue to live off. Goods are not usually sold at their natural price though. The actual price at which any commodity is commonly sold is called its market price. It may either be above or below or exactly the same with its natural price. The rest of chapter 7 tries to explain what gives a commodity its market price, and his ideas are as true today as they were then. The market price of every particular commodity is regulated by the proportion between the quantity which is actually brought to market and the demand of those who are willing to pay the natural price of the commodity. If a commodity is in short supply, it will be sold to the highest bidder, or the price will go up. If there is a surplus of the product, or more has been produced than there are buyers wanting it, the producers must then compete against each other for the customers, and the price must drop to ensure the producer isn't left with unsold products. This is especially true with perishable items, such as food, that must be sold before they go off. Oranges, for example, are more likely to be reduced for a quick sale than iron. When the supply is the same as demand, the market price will be the same, or nearly the same, as the natural price. Competition of the different dealers obliges them to accept this price but it does not oblige them to accept of less. Smith explains the idea of effectual demand, which is the demand by people who can actually afford to buy something. A poor person may want a fancy horse and carriage, but if they cannot afford one, it doesn't add to the real level of demand. Smith thinks that over time, market prices will tend to gravitate towards the natural price, as this is in everyone's self-interest. If the market price is above the natural price, competition between sellers will drive it down. The market price cannot remain under the natural price for a long time, as the people selling the product could get a better return from doing something else with it. They would leave the market, the supply would drop, and supply would meet demand. But some things affect the supply or demand of a commodity and keep the market price higher or lower than the natural price. Events may happen, like bad harvests, which reduce supply or increase demand. Smith mentions trade secrets and monopolies as two factors which keep prices high. People who have the secret to making something have no competition, forcing them to lower their price. Individuals or companies with a monopoly can keep the market constantly understocked so that supply never meets demand. The price of something controlled by a monopoly will be the most money they can get for it. Think about a new iPhone. Only Apple can make them, and they charge as much as they can. The natural price, however, will be the lowest price that still allows the seller a revenue to make it worth their time selling it. The one is, upon every occasion, the highest which can be squeezed out of the buyers, or which it is supposed they will consent to give. The other is the lowest which the sellers can commonly afford to take, and at the same time continue their business. Competition is good, it gives us cheap things. Monopolies are good for the people who control them, but bad for the economy of the nation.